Hi, I want to introduce you to Bill Holmes, and Bill is with Front Street Mortgage Company. Hello, Bill. Welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> so, Bill, tell me a little bit about your background and how long you've been in mortgages and where you are and a little bit about that. Okay, thank you. Well, first, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. Um, been at this for quite a while. This is uh, almost my 36th year in the mortgage business. Wow. Wow. Um, most of it in the Ann Arbor area, but for the last uh, five and a half here in Traverse City, and uh, I love what I do. Yes, well, that's and it and it shows because my clients that I've referred to you have just had glowing reports. Well, thank so you. we are in unprecedented times right now, and there's a lot of changes going on. So what I'd like you to do is tell our viewers, you know, what are what are the changes? What's happening in that mortgage market right now with these times that we're in? Sure. Happy to. Yeah, this is definitely uncharted territory. Um, we haven't seen anything like this um, ever. And uh, every day we're, we're learning new things about how to deal with borrowers, how to deal with the mortgage market, what's happening with rates and uh, different ways of verifying things that we had never had to deal with before. So I thought maybe we just touch on a few things that uh, buyers might be interested in knowing uh, as they move forward in this. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Interest rates, perhaps. Yeah. Let's chat a little bit about rates, if you don't mind. Um, it, rates yep. are still excellent. Um, okay. They are about as good as they have ever been. Um, we saw some increase in the rates over the last uh, four or five weeks when we entered into this uh, mess that we're in yeah. and uh, saw a little uncertainty with the mortgage markets in terms of not knowing what to make of it. Um, so we did see rates jumping around quite a bit, but they've leveled back off to level that's right around the 4% uh, above or below, depending on a, bar, on a, on a borrower situation. So mm -hmm. we're in real good shape in that regard. Well, that's good. That's good. What about credit scoring and stuff? I understand that's changed. Yes, it has. Uh, very good question. Uh, minimum credit scores for some products have gone up. Uh, conventional loans, um, well, first of all, credit scores typically run from 350 to 850. And credit scores for conventional mortgages, which is the, about 75% of the market, uh, are still 620 or above. They have not changed. But what has changed quite a bit are VA, FHA, and RD credit scores. And at this point, um, at least as of today, which could change tomorrow, you never know. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, VA and RD loans are both requiring a minimum of 660 credit scores. And that's up uh, anywhere from 20 to 40 points. And FHA now is at 680. So okay. we've seen quite a bit of movement up, and we're hoping this will be a, 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 a transitory thing that uh, once the uh, market stables, stabilizes and we get past this mess that we're in, uh, that rates, uh, excuse me, that uh, credit scores might be able to move back down. But I guess a good thing to keep in mind if you have been working with a lender, it's probably not a bad idea to reach out to them again. Uh, maybe have your credit repulled or at least uh, checked on to make sure you're still qualified for what you hope you can uh, get. That's a very good suggestion. Just for the viewers' um, sake, would you explain what RD loans are? Oh, sure. RD is rural development, and those are loans through the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Uh, okay. They are for low to moderate income people. Uh, they don't, are not for farms at all. They generally are for one to perhaps five acres, um, but are, are available for all of northern Michigan with as little as zero down. But they do have some income restrictions uh, that, uh, based upon family size, that can preclude some people from being able to obtain one. Okay, very good. I know sometimes we have a tendency to talk in our own jargons and people you know, <laughs> don't understand what we're talking about. Good point, so. good point, good point. Yeah. Good point. So One also, of the other things I want to share too is what we see yeah. happening out there with uh, verifying people are still working. Um, oh, we good uh, point. typically would, uh, we, uh, lenders have pretty much always done a re-verification of employment just prior to closing where we uh, verbally verify the person's still working. Um, that's still happening, but it, uh, the time frame is being shortened a little bit that uh, we are doing those now uh, generally within a day to three or four days prior to closing. We're also having to make sure that they're not just working, but they're working at the same uh, level they were before, uh, same number of hours. Um, uh, Lenders may ask if, if there is an imminent uh, layoff or uh, perhaps termination of someone's employment coming down the line because we want to make sure that we're not putting them or us in a position where they aren't going to be able to make those payments. So 
Um, we are asking borrowers to let us know who we need to contact because many HR departments are closed mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. we are still required to do that. One thing I did want to uh, touch base a little bit more on is those that are self-employed. Uh, self-employed is a whole different ball game now and many lenders are requiring per the agency being Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, et cetera, the um, re-verification that those businesses are still viable uh, sometimes as little as again one to three days prior to closing. We wow. can accomplish that sometimes by verifying through their website if they are still open and able to take appointments. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe able to call their uh, again their website and if somebody answers and says yes we're open and still going ahead with business that's good. Uh, we may uh, require a, a person to provide us with ongoing um, evidence of income through at least the closing date and or uh, contracts further out so that we can verify it's still a viable concern. Wow, things have changed, haven't they? So what now on people that are on salary, do they have to show a pay stub before you can close? Yeah, we're asking for, for it to, to get a, a pay stub much closer to closing than we used to, uh, to again, to verify, uh, double check that they are still uh, in, the, in the same uh, state they were prior to right. the uh, okay. pandemic. That makes sense. Now, a lot of people are asking me, and I'm sure you too, about forbearance and things like that, because mm -hmm. you hear this in the news. So could you explain what's happening there? I sure can. Yeah, forbearance has become a big thing that's popped up. Forbearance and deferment. Um, they are, and many people look at this as perhaps a way out of making a payment, but uh, they are, it is not that whatsoever. Um, these would be two mechanisms that a borrower might want to enter into with the servicer of their loan. And a servicer of their loan is who they make their payments to. Mm -hmm. They may have originated their mortgage through ABC and now it's serviced by PDQ. PDQ <laughs> would be who they would want to talk with to verify um, any, any issue. So if someone thinks um, they're going to have a problem with making a home payment, the best thing to do is reach out to that servicer as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, the servicer will ask, is your, your problem related to COVID-19? Um, if it is, then per the CARES Act, servicers are obliged and will uh, allow deferment or a forbearance on the making of their payment. It could be such that they will allow payment to be spread out over a three or four or five month time frame. It may be such that they take that payment and it onto the end of the mortgage. Um, and we are seeing this happening more and more. In fact, as of this week, about 3% of all mortgages in the country have gone to that. And it's something that we rarely see have happened. So the bottom line on that is, um, if you think you're going to have an issue, call the servicer. They would much rather work with you now mm -hmm. instead of some type of plan. Uh, one thing that we are seeing is that uh, many servicers are asking a borrower to at least make the escrow payment. And that would be for their tax and insurances so that those things can be kept current. And many servicers are then willing to forego receipt of the uh, uh, principal and interest payment at this time while things get worked out. Oh, that's good to know. Very good. Anything else that you think is really important that the viewers should listen to or know? Uh, yeah, I think how appraisals are being handled. Oh, good. Uh, typically, an appraiser will go to the home and uh, visit the property, take pictures, uh, perhaps converse with the seller. <laughs> um, but uh, that is obviously being cur curtailed at this time. And we're seeing a big movement uh, for those properties that are eligible over the property inspection waiver. Uh, there's been so much uh, done over the past 10, 15 years with appraisal gathering by uh, the, the big mortgage entities that a lot of data is readily available. So we are seeing in some instances where an appraisal can be uh, waived. A uh, borrower does not have to have an appraisal. Generally, it's going to be um, more down 20% or more down in most cases. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also seeing what they call desktop appraisals. And a desktop appraisal is the same as a true regular appraisal without the visit to the home. Wow. So, okay. uh, yeah, this, it's becoming more and more popular. In that case, the appraiser uh, works at their desk. Uh, they have all this data available and can provide uh, an appraisal without visiting the home that will be acceptable to lenders. So we've seen some big changes of that, especially the fact that uh, realtors are not able to uh, go out and be present in, in a lot of things right now, real estate related. So we are appreciating the fact that we have some alternatives to get us through this mess. Yeah, that's good. Another thing that's happening is the, they are now allowing inspections of the houses. 
and the seller has to agree to have the inspector come. But now they just changed it where the new buyer is allowed to go to that inspection if the um, seller agrees to it and the inspector agrees to it. But it has to be a licensed inspector, one that does that for a living, can't be their brother or their uncle or something like that. Right. Right. And uh, that's, good. So that's, that's a way a good for thing. people to see the house now, whereas, yeah. you know, we can't show them and they're just looking at them virtually. So, yeah, no, that's that's very good. I guess, you know, one of the things I probably would want to make sure everybody's aware of is that, you know, now is the time to be talking with your realtor, talk with the lender about getting pre-approved. Um, yes. Once we get through all of this, uh, we're going to see an explosion of business. Yeah, and there's a lot of already pent up demand that was uh, there five weeks ago, and that's just building. And once we come out of this, it's gonna be imperative that as you as a buyer uh, have your ducks in a row, that mm -hmm. you get in touch with the lender, hopefully me, thank you. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, get your credit pulled, have an application done, go through all the necessary steps so that when uh, homes are uh, back on the market, um, we can emerge from this and be ready to tackle what I think will be a, a very strong year for what, what will be remaining. I agree with you um, wholeheartedly. So pl please take this time while you're home, reach out to Bill, get pre-qualified and pre-approved. What's the difference between pre-qualification and pre-approval? Well, good question. Um, they are not the same and they tend to be used interchangeably, but they're not. A pre-qualification is simply where I speak, in this case, with somebody on the phone as opposed to a person and uh, ask information about income and debts and credit scores, how much they like their payment to be, uh, and, and run some numbers and let them know, okay, based upon what you've told me, it looks like you could be pre-qualified for a mortgage of X with a payment of X and it would cost you X amount of dollars to get this. Mm -hmm. um, that's the perfect start, but you really want to take that next step and have a pre-approval. Right. Um, a seller is going to want to see a pre-approval letter because the seller that way knows that the borrower's been vetted, their credit, credit's been checked, their income and all the other assets are in line. Mm -hmm. And that will mm -hmm. take one more step where a borrower has to do a complete mortgage application, allow us to pull credit, mm -hmm. provide us with that, the necessary documentation, and then we can generally run that through an automated underwriting system that will give us feedback on if this loan meets the criteria to be pre-approved. Jenny was going to want to have a letter from me that says, uh, congratulations, Bob and Sally have been pre-approved for a conventional mortgage right. uh, with a purchase right. price of X, subject to the following. That will really strengthen their position when they're ready to step into the mortgage market. And uh, the more you can get done with that right now, the better off you'll be when that time comes. Oh, absolutely. It can make, and make a huge difference in getting that offer accepted on a house. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, okay Bill. Well, if somebody, when somebody wants to get a hold of you, how do they do that? What's your contact information? Uh, Oh, you can just call me on my cell. That's the way we're doing it now. 734-546-6870 uh, or bill at frontstreetmtg.com. Very good. Well, Bill, it was a pleasure talking to you. And I know this is a very valuable interview. People are going to learn a lot from it. So well, thank, thank you, you very, very much. Thank you. You've got, you've got a great realtor there. So call her. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. Okay. Thanks for listening, guys. Okay. Bye now. Bye.